Our very special guest this time is Hanki Kunjaro. He is a black and white photographer now visiting Japan. Welcome to Japan. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And you're here from Jakarta, right? I'm from, from Jakarta. Uh, I've been traveling to Japan. Uh, this is the, my third time with Tobin and Ohashi Gallery. Thank you. Right. Let's just jump right into it. We're looking at a picture of Tokyo Tower here. We know that uh, Tokyo Tower is one of the most iconic uh, building, I would say, in Tokyo. So based on that, I, c I came to the uh, Ropongi Hill and I happened to see this view, which is quite beautiful. I mean, uh, the tower is surrounded by beautiful building, but uh, I tried to present it in a different form, different look. So I decided to come at night because when it's at night, everything is kind of uh, have a different kind of atmosphere especially with the lights all over the place it's like blinking it looks like a dream to me look like a star or something like that what kind of camera did you use for this uh, basically i'm uh, uh i'm using a dslr camera right now which is digital i started what uh, about 30 years ago using film i went to brooks institute of photography uh, at that time in the 80s you don't have any digital at all so i have still have to do everything in a dark room way but then again, in the 90s, in the 2000s, I start to uh, purchase a digital camera and then I s it's cheaper. I mean, you don't have to worry about film, you don't have to worry about developing. And you still have dark room, but we call it the light room now. The light room? The light room is a software. I see, and that's the software that you use to decide on the composition of your shots? A composition and uh, try to make the atmosphere, quote unquote, the ambience. Basically, my photography is but uh, uh, I call it an atmospheric photography. So I'm not trying to actually try to show where it is or what it is. It's more like what you feel when you look at the photography. It's just like an expression. Now, your photography is on display at the Tobin Ohashi studio. That's correct. Uh, here in Tokyo. Uh -huh. And of course, we'll put information about that on a little okay. bit later. Uh -huh. Let's look at another picture. Yes. Flowers. Uh, not just flowers. This is uh, Sakura. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, who would ever think of taking a picture <laughs> of Sakura in black and white? Well, uh, the reason why, uh, because I don't want people to uh, get so serious with the color. When, when we look at the color, then the first thing that pop up in your mind is how, how a beautiful color this flower is. But when you get rid of the color, then you start seeing form, texture. And basically that's what I want to present, that uh, this beautiful flower has a very different look with the shade, especially with the shade, with the black and white, the gray and everything. It's basically you're trying to play with, uh, try to play with shading, yeah? I know it's black and white, but it doesn't mean it's only black and white. There's a lot of things between going on between the black and white, a lot of grays. So you, you can orchestrate all those tones into a composition, I would say. Why did you choose black and white as your medium instead of color? The reason why I go into photography was because of these two person, the master, uh, Ansel Adam, which is uh, from oh, yeah. America. Sure. And, and also Michael Kena. Michael Kena is a fine art black and white photographer from England. So they pretty much uh, paved my way into photography. Uh, I never seen black and white can be beautiful. Before I thought black and white is a, is a photograph, uh, photography for journalism, newspaper. Sure. But now suddenly Ansel Adam changed everything, like the Yosemite uh, collection. It's just beautiful, it just blew my mind away and uh, I said I have to do something like this in black and white. Let's look at another picture. Okay. We seem to be at a beach shot. Okay, <laughs> this is at the beach shot and if you notice the trail, uh -huh. I'm on yeah. in the other carriage. I'm in the front, uh, on the front uh, carriage. So that carriage uh, uh, was following me, so I was shooting behind. The reason of that is because I love this uh, kind of atmospheric uh, beach, yeah? where you can see a lot of flat lands, uh, like maybe half or two kilometers all the way to the ocean. Uh, usually we see a lot of rocks, but in this kind of atmosphere, it looks like very surreal to me. What about the temperature that day? The temperature is kind of hot because we live in Indonesia. Uh, this is uh, the, 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 the archipelago that cross the, the equator. Mm -hmm. That's the zero degrees, so it's about 
37 to 40 degrees Celsius, I would say. And, and of course, you were born and raised in Jakarta, is That's that correct? correct? I was born in central Java, but most of the time I live in uh, uh, Jakarta, which is the capital. Yes. Uh, you'll have to teach me how to pronounce that properly. Say, say that again. Uh, the Jakarta? Yeah. Jakarta. Jakarta. Jakarta, yes. Did I get that right? That's, uh, you get it perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, let's move on to another picture. Yes. What are we looking at here? This is a lionfish. Uh, I, I'm a certified diver. So uh, every time I uh, go diving, I always have my camera with uh, underwater housing with me. So again, in this, all I look is just texture. With, if you put color on this fish, then uh, the beauty of the texture, the, shape, the shapes and the line kind of disappear because the color kind of overpowering your eyes. But this is a tropical fish and this tropical is... fish are famous for being Colorful, colorful, right? Well, they're also beautiful in a time of shapes. Yes, they are. It looks like, to me, it looks like a lion almost. It looks like a, a different kind of fish in it. Yeah. And do you carry a camera with you all the time? I do. I do. Yeah, because uh, things might happen and you don't know when. Uh, even though it's not uh, about col uh, what, a landscape, but uh, I like to do some uh, sometimes a street photography, and when you, when you have a good light, you have a beautiful photograph. So you just have to snap it. Doesn't have to be a real expensive camera. Sometimes I do my handphone. Really? Yes. Using your iPhone or your your um, iPhone? Yes. And anything that uh, attached to the handphone will do. Yeah. A camera is a camera. I mean, it doesn't really need to be expensive. If you have a, a concept, a good concept, and a good eye in photography, camera is just a tool. Yeah. So I've heard that the best camera is the one you have with you. I'm uh, appointed by Hasselblad as their ambassador. Is that right? That's right. Uh, right now, because I'm under contract, I have to use Hasselblad camera which is quite different because they're a medium format camera. The one that we uh, see in the market mostly are DSLR, which, right. is, which is a 35 millimeters kind of a shape camera. Mm -hmm. But uh, Hasselblad is about 70% bigger in terms of, uh, uh, of sensor. So with, with, with that kind of sensor, you get more details, I see. more dynamic range, uh -huh. much better gradation in color. Mm -hmm. And because it's mirrorless, it's very light, so I'm very happy with the camera. So I use Hasselblad now. And you're the ambassador for Hasselblad? One of the 11 ambassador, glad to say. And what model of Hasselblad do you use? The X1D, that's a, a, the mirrorless camera. That's a Hasselblad, uh, the, the newest one they have, a mirrorless camera, yes. And if somebody wanted to jump into photography, would you suggest that camera? Yes, yeah. because it's a very uh, user-friendly, mm -hmm. and I think uh, there's not a lot of buttons that you in the menu that you have to learn is uh, is pretty much uh, I would say straightforward, uh -huh. but at a cost. <laughs> at a cost. Okay. Well, well, well it's what's a, the cost? It's a European product. Okay. It's a handmade from Sweden. Okay. It's sounding so, more and more expensive with every it, every little description here. Yes, and uh, there's not many in the world. They don't produce that many in the world, so it costs well well above ten thousand for the simple model. Come as it compared to only six or five thousand with the DSLR, and so Hasselblad gave you a couple of these cameras to shoot they do. with. Yeah. They do. So, but, wow! Uh, so every time I shoot, I have to use Hasselblad, and every time I post on on, on social media, yeah. I have to I have to list the, the the camera type. And they should be very happy right now hearing your endorsement in our podcast. Oh, wow. <laughs> there you go. By the way, we're looking at another picture right yeah, now. This yeah. seems to be a waterfall. This is a waterfall in Bali. Uh -huh. This is in Bali Island. Bali is beautiful. It, it is a beautiful... I would uh, never think to take pictures in black and white in <laughs> Bali, though. Okay. Uh, but uh, look at the text. Again, yeah. this is a, 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 an atmospheric photography. Mm. Uh, even the title, I, I call it the Satin Fall mm, for this one. Okay, so, so it, that's a nice title for this. Yeah, well, How do you, you had, choose a title for a picture? Uh, the first thing that come up that pop in your mind, usually mm -hmm. the, that's the best title. Mm -hmm. Because you're, when you're doing it in the computer, mm -hmm. subconsciously you're trying to create something to, 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 uh, for a title. Hmm. And at a certain point, it just popped out, and then, then you name it. How many pictures does it take? How many shots do you have to take before you get a piece of art? Uh, well, it's hard to say. Sometimes you don't get any. 
uh, in a day. Yeah, uh, most of most of the photo photography are deal with nature. Uh, nature is uh, what uh, unpredictable. Sure. Yeah, but there are some instant when you see it and you know it right away that this is going to be good. Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, of course I'm always looking forward for that moment, but it's not easy to to be able to 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 uh, to, to to see that kind of a uh, situation. Yeah. So do you have a third eye, as I've been told many artists uh, are, are supposed to have a third eye, so that when you view the world, mm-hmm. you have another eye that's, that's telling you that this is a good shot? Yes, uh, from, from learning from uh, being a black and white person, you have to know how to see things in black and white. So when you see something, you, you kind of uh, a vision, like, uh, like you are you're the third eye. Mm. You pretty much know how it's going to look in black and white, what the blue is going to register to black and white, what the yellow, what, and all the color. Now, your pictures are rather large. What kind of pixel count do you use? Am I using the right terminology that's correct, here? That's correct. Every single camera has its, has its own uh, uh, megapixel count. Right now, with, uh, with Hasselblad, since I'm using a medium format, which is 70% bigger than the DSLR, it's around 50 megapixel. So with that kind of size, middle format, I can go all the way uh, to one by two meters very easy, even bigger. And what about paper? What kind of paper do you put your art on? Uh, right now, the best paper for black and white come from uh, Germany. It's called uh, Hanemul paper. So this is a... Uh, How do you spell that? H uh, A N E M U H L E. Honeymoon, okay. yes, yes. They come out with paper that's pretty much look like the good old uh, darkroom day. Uh-huh. It's almost, it feels almost like a fiber, uh-huh. like a cloth, something like that. Even though they're more chemical, but they feel and they look exactly like the golden day of photography. Well, thank you very much for all the pointers you've given well, both to me and to our listeners, both here in Japan and around the world. Another question, before you leave Japan, yes. if there were some things that you felt you had to shoot here in Japan, what do you think would be your top three choices? The snow, the snow, and the snow. <laughs> oh, right. That's in, in black and white, the snow. Uh, yes, because uh, they get rid of the unnecessary things. They get rid of the, the unwanted details on the scene, yeah? Everything is white, everything's perfect. So uh, it makes life a little bit easier how to compose things. I mean, you, if you have just one single tree like that, surrounded by snow, I, I bet the atmosphere could be completely different. So I'm looking forward with the snow thing in Hokkaido. Okay. And I heard it's been snowing real good. <laughs> yes, it has. Thank you so much for Thank you. Thank joining you. us here in the Kong Show on the Japan Today website. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. For more details, check the Tobin Ohashi Gallery website. All the important information is right there.